Welcome to Real Vision. My name is Santiago Velez, co-founder of Block Digital Corporation, and I'm excited today to bring with us uh, to you, Mr. Jules Robach, CEO of Otoy. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. So I'm really excited to have you on uh, the channel today to discuss uh, a lot of the things you're working on. Um, I personally think that uh, Render Network, which is one of the things we'll talk about today, is probably a, uh, a very uh, seminal moment in how uh, compute is distributed for, for services. But we'll get into that before we do. I'd love to hear about your past, how you uh, co-founded uh, Otoy, and what the motivation was and what exactly the company does. Sure. Well, I'll start with, with what the company does and then work backwards from there. We're, we're, uh, Otoy is primarily a software company. We um, uh, sell a you know, package of software that's based around Octane Render. Uh, it was the industry's first production-ready GPU renderer, and uh, it's, it's doing amazingly well today. We have a huge audience of artists that have been using it. I think it helped transform uh, the lives of a lot of artists. The goal of the company was to democratize rendering. Um, and, and going back to how I started it, I, I basically right out of high school, I was 18, um, this is the early 90s, so it's been about you know, 30 years of, of, of work. Uh, you know, I, I was always fascinated by uh, both real-time graphics. I wanted to make video games. That's actually how I got started. I did a game called Hellcat. But I also wanted to make movies, and I wanted to have those two converge and ultimately also ex be experienced holographically. I, I a big Star Trek fan, so for me, Star Trek: The Next Generation, that first episode uh, with, with the holodeck. I mean, that really did sort of open my eyes to how I imagined experiences occurring, you know, in the in the future. And Otoy came out of uh, out of that, really. I, you know, I I also um, it was twenty years ago. Um, a man named Ari Emanuel, who uh, you know, some I you mean, know, he's the CEO of, of Endeavor and WME and IMG. And he also helped me get the company going. I mean, he was a huge influence and is a huge influence to this very day, you know, since every day on the direction I took Otoy. Uh, and, and also opened a lot of doors to everyone in the, in the film business, um, also in the tech side and, and really one of my closest advisors. So there is sort of a bit, bit of DNA of, of the games industry and, and the movie business. Um, but, you know, it, it's been great to sort of get to the point where, you know, we have a very inexpensive monthly sub it's like 20 bucks a month and with that you get all these great tools and also access to to the render network which is another layer of of um well it's really a whole separate thing from from the core of software business but it's very exciting as well that's great uh so for our non-technically minded audience uh can you define a little bit exactly what is rendering and why do either uh, movie production or artists, et cetera, why do they need to render things? And wh what's the implication? How does that play into um, that capability play into this vision of a, of a, holo of a holodeck? Right? So right. what exactly is it? Well, so I think rendering is, is probably best understood. I mean, I think most uh, people that go see movies today are familiar with CGI, right? That's what makes a movie expensive. You know, go to a Marvel movie, you're, you're going to see tons of crazy things that are not filmed. They're computer generated. So rendering is typically, you know, the process of rendering uh, imagery um, from, you know, 3D files from data, and you end up with an image that and hopefully looks real. I think, you know, the beauty of what we've built with Octane uh, Render is that it's, it's, you know, it used to take 40 hours, and still does in some cases, for one frame to render on a CPU, a normal, you know, this way it was done forever, even by Pixar. And graphics cards, the same chips that you put inside of a PlayStation or an Xbox um, that do video games, we program those to to render you know, Pixar quality graphics at about one fortieth the time and cost. And that is why you know we did democratize rendering because you know it, it, the, the larger audience we serve is all the individual users that can now turn into their own ILMs, like Corridor Crew, which makes these you know amazing viral videos of Boston Dynamics robots and all this stuff. They did a thing where, oh, we'll just redo the uh, you know, Star Wars trench run, you know, at Battle of Yavin uh, over the weekend. And they do it in Octane. And Octane is so fast that it takes the 40 hours per frame that it used to be on a massive render farm and makes that almost nothing. The problem is that now you have things that are going beyond that people want to render in these massive stereo, you know, movies with VR and so forth. And 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 so I think rendering is is largely um, you know, anything that, that that makes CG, but you also have, you know, rendering in video games and video games themselves, if they are rendered at the same process that a film is, then you have films that are rendered in real time. And that's where the metaverse you know, component comes in a little bit. 
So yeah, there's the rendering is a, is, is a something that I think people can understand or grasp with CG. And there's tons of CG stuff done in our render, the opening of Westworld and a bunch of uh, two Marvel movies, um, the openings for, for Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel and, and many, many more. Most of the TV openings that you see are probably done in Octane. We're very popular for for that in that milieu, especially. So, yeah. So Octane, if I understand it correctly, then is a software platform that gives uh, a lot of the technical tools for artists or whoever's in the production flow, the ability to render uh, whatever it is they're interested in, right? So it has a, it's kind of the accumulation of many years of features that continually add on based on the demand. Um, and it's just kind of sweet, right? Uh, similar to how maybe Photoshop or for yes. or a, a graphic designer, um, this is the software platform for for uh, individuals wanting to render. And, and so it has a whole number of, uh, I guess, like physics, like in-game um, or in-program physics that help them, right? For lighting and shading and things like that. Yes, that right? it's it's so easy. Yes, exactly that. So it, it, the Octane is, is probably also, it, you know, when it was introduced, it wasn't just faster and on the GPU. It also was spectrally correct, unbiased. What those words mean is that it's like, there are no cheats. It just it just it just runs the laws of physics for light, and you know you take a certain light that's that's been metered, you know an IES light or something from a spotlight, and you just bounce it off of a material that's been measured, and you end up with a perfect picture. And you you actually can be a cinematographer and just a cinematographer and get really great results out of Octane. And that's that's also been you know revelatory for artists. So yes, it runs it runs um, you know the the simulation of, of photons bouncing around, and you end up with a, a picture, and it does. You know, it, it gets exposed like a picture would, almost like if people remember great, you know, Polaroids, they would take the pictures instant, but it would take a while for the image to show up. That's how rendering with Octane works. It's, it's progressive rendering. Um, so it's, you get an almost instantaneous image, it's a bit grainy, then the grain goes away with time. And that's how the rendering process for our, our software works. That's fascinating because I think underneath that, I see kind of several um, long term secular currents that are enabling this. I mean, the first obviously is this change in computing, right? There is this uh, explosion of GPU processes, you know, either for machine learning or driverless cars or, or, or uh, what, what have you, but rendering is one of those technologies that seems to really be benefiting from the GPU architecture. And so it's very GPU focused. So um, I, I don't think that would have happened had we not had producers like you know nvidia or amd etc generating these graphic cards for for gamers and and then ultimately for industry um yeah. so the, the other big trend that i see here that you've kind of touched into is this um explosion in cgi right in film and movies television uh that that, that seems to be popularized it's gotten to the point of quality that it's not only acceptable but it actually adds value to the movie uh, would, would you agree yeah. with that? I would. I think. If, if, I think that if you're looking at it from the Nol Chris Nolan perspective, where you don't, you can't tell what CGI and what isn't, right? Then it's it it, it is additive. Um, I'm not a huge fan of CGI that that clearly looks it, and 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 you know, I mean, I I, I love the old style of movies, you know, the Douglas mm -hmm. Trumbull era where things were practical and they looked filmed. But really, you could do that with rendering. I mean, you could do that with CGI. It just requires, you know, a bit of thought and artistry and 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 and. You know, there are plenty of artists that are doing that. And I think that's what's so exciting is that you are, you know, you don't have to create these massive sets of physical objects. Um, you know, with, with, with a good renderer, you can actually make that look just as good as if, as if it were filmed. And that's what I love about, you know, our software and others. I mean, there are the GPU renderers that have come out since we pioneered it. And actually, they're all they're all on the render network as well. So it's 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 something like we're, we're a fraternity of of. Um, you know, of, of, of GPU pioneers, but it, it is exciting to see that. And CGI has become much different um, in the last few years because of GPU rendering. NVIDIA, AMD, and now Apple are all, you know, really pushing the envelope. I mean, we've been largely NVIDIA only for a decade uh, since, since Octane came out, but recently we've supported um, Intel, AMD, and, and Apple Silicon on the Mac. And Apple's been a great uh, partner of ours, uh, you know, they, they're a collaborator. I mean, they've, they've given us huge attention. I was just in the keynote last year for the new Mac uh, Pro, which I'm actually speaking to you on. And uh, and so we're seeing that the CG that was rendered for films, Marvel films, right on the cloud and and and, and in, you know on GPUs could that be done, believe it or not, on an iPad with an M1, which is crazy. And it does work in real time. Um, it's, it's wild. I mean, there's no difference between what the phone can render and what you're seeing in a Marvel movie. It's just a question of time and memory. 
Um, and, and the and the M1, the Apple M1, is not that slow. It's um, it's it's about as good as a mid-range NVIDIA GPU desktop GPU five years ago. I hope you enjoyed this clip and will decide to join us for the rest of the interview, among many others, on realvision.com forward slash crypto. The crypto channel is 100% free. You just have to sign up. Look forward to seeing you there.